Swaminathan, Ishwar Iyer, Vishal Mehta, and Tejas. I also take this opportunity to congratulate our team member Rakesh Gadgi, who got married today afternoon in Bellari in Karnataka, and I wish him a long, happy married life. And uh, this is from the entire VHS family, and on behalf of our viewers, Rakesh has been a very important team member of our uh, VHS team, which is behind Gyan Ganga and Words of Wisdom. So with these opening remarks, it is over to Dr. Subramaniam Swami to tell us what is this all issue all about, because we Indians are used to having election result virtually within few hours of the counting starting and things are very straightforward. Although some of these Western countries claim to be big democratics, but we in India have proved that we are fast as far as the election results are concerned. And thanks to Dr. Swami and his fight for VVPAT, which brought transparency, transparency in the EVMs in India, things are also safe and transparent as far as elections are concerned. But we are not sure what's happening in the US. So common man outside US is confused. Perhaps the Americans are also confused. So we have these two experts, Ramesh Swami and Sri Ayer, to tell us more on what are these reports and what are these indicators. So over to Dr. Swami for his expert comments and to initiate the discussion. Well, um, I would uh, I'd like to hear the two visitor, two of our guests. Uh, one is, of course, a permanent guest, in fact, an anchor. Ramesh Narayan Swami, or Narayan Swami Ramesh, or Ramesh Swami for short, and uh, 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 Sri Ayer, who I already have uh, um, uh, introduced. Now, the question in basically in the minds of us Indians is that America was known as a great bastion of democracy. And uh, you have uh, these allegations uh, in, in the largest. There have been allegations in the past. There was some kind of allegation even in 2016 and in the Bush uh, elections. Uh, but in terms of uh, wholesale uh, stealing of the election, uh, this is the first time I've seen in the United States uh, this kind of allegations. Uh, even the Kennedy period, uh, there was some question about uh, uh, rigging in uh, Chicago, but it was not uh, nationwide. So uh, what I will like to say, no matter what has happened, that look at the American system. The president makes an allegation. And the attorney general says, no, there's nothing in it. I can't imagine this happening in India. Then uh, he goes to the Supreme Court where he's got a majority Republicans of which the, the last three years he's personally appointed. And they unanimously say, Republicans, Democrats together, Supreme Court, no, no, this is not, not worthy of notice. And they dismiss it immediately. And, uh, you know, there are Republicans also who have uh, taken a stand uh, against uh, Trump, who's the, uh, still the president of the United States. So America, this um, uh, multipolarity of uh, power centers is something which is something I think uh, I would like to, in the beginning, I mean, after we criticize America for other things, let me say that one does feel a sense of pride that democracy can work like this. I, I, I will find this very hard to see it being replicated in India in the present circumstances, although we have had uh, and during Mrs. Gandhi's time, the uh, Allahabad High Court judge uh, found her guilty. And that's how the whole transformation came. Uh, we had uh, H.R. Khanna who stood up against uh, Mrs. Gandhi's attempt to uh, say that even taking away life is, uh, is, uh, is justified uh, in the emergency without a trial or without the due process. So. Uh, we are, uh, uh, first of all, from whatever I've seen, we are uh, impressed uh, that America is a vibrant dem democratic society. But uh, the nagging feeling in all of us is there is something uh, not correct. 
And uh, I don't know whether we are mistaken, but you see, we are getting reports. Now, today I saw uh, Gingrich's uh, statement uh, that uh, he don't trust the selections at all. I mean, he's uh, totally with the Trump on this matter. And uh, he has been the Speaker of the House. And uh, there's a major uh, uh, decision, you know, announcement to come on the 6th of January by the uh, House of Representatives that uh, finally, uh, who is officially uh, the President of the United States. So um, I think uh, well, or, or the, uh, as the Navarro uh, uh, paper that um, Jagdish Sethi just referred to, that has a tremendous amount of documentation. I've seen other documentation. I'd just like to know from these two of you uh, uh, that what really happened. Why is it that in the night before, at least by Indian Standard Time, we thought Trump has won and then woke up in the morning to find everything has changed. So uh, how is it uh, that uh, such a big transformation in, uh, in vote took place? Uh, and the, the picture we want to clarify for India, because India wishes the United States democracy well. And we think that if you are a Democrat, if you are a democratic country, we also get strength. During the emergency, I'll never forget the Americans extended support to me. When I came there in every part, the American public came and attended our public meetings, put, uh, you know, these were conveyed to Mrs. Gandhi. Mrs. Gandhi herself told me that, uh, you know, one of the reasons I declared the election was, of course, uh, first reason she gave us that you came to parliament and disappeared. <laughs> which means that it was a very strong underground and I couldn't uh, continue in this uh, darkness, uh, not knowing exactly when somebody will pop up from some place. And so uh, she said, I thought I'll hold an election to win. And then, of course, the American pressure, which she also told me it was tremendous, thanks to your campaign uh, in the United States. So uh, in this background, we would like to know uh, from two uh, of our um, prominent Indians in uh, who have made a name already in their own fields, of course, but also in the social media. And uh, we would like to know what happened according to you and your scientific observation. Over to the two of you, starting with um, uh, Sri Ayer, because um, uh, Ramesh is, of course, being with us, so we will give second priority, not first priority. <laughs> Uh, over to you, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mute you. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Not done. Go ahead. Namaskaram, Dr. Swami, and a big hello to VHS family. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you to share my thoughts on what just concluded in the United States of America. I must say, as an American citizen, I hang my head in shame at the mess with which this whole election has played out. But we need to understand a few ground rules. For those of you who didn't follow my previous hangout on uh, Gyan Ganga, I just want to quickly uh, tell you that every state will certify the election. The Secretary of State of that state certifies the election. And once that happens, it is considered done and dusted. So the January 6th meeting where they are expecting uh, that there could be some, um, you know, magic, some overturn. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but uh, at this point, it is a safe bet to assume that the next president of United States on the ja January 20th, 2021 would be Joe Biden. Now, having said that, we have to take a look at what has played out in this election. You know, in 2016, when there were allegations about Russian interference, there was a book written, it's a book of fiction, written about how specific counties in specific uh, uh, districts can be uh, rigged to give you a totally different result. This was a book of fiction by an author called David Pepper, but that what, uh, you know, kind of, gives you an idea that, whoa, it is possible to rig elections in the United States. And what we see play out, according to Dr. Peter Navarro's 36-page report, is that there was very focused, concerted attempt at rigging. This is his allegation. 
The problem with this whole report is that the evidence has uh, been presented only in one case, which is which I'm going to share to you also at the end of this 10 slide presentation. I'm going to quickly go through this thing. So um, Ramesh, if you could start this. Uh, thank you. So on the column side, you have six states, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. And the, the rows tell you all the different observations of Dr. Peter Navarro. We should keep in mind that he is a PhD in economics from Harvard. So he comes with a lot of gravitas. So it is not someone just making a partisan view. It is an academic who has done uh, a rigorous research. There have been criticisms of this report in Washington Post and in Forbes magazine. We should also remember that Steve Forbes is a Republican. So there, there has been some criticism. However, what the, neither of those rebuttals have been unable to prove is why that 50 people have given sworn affidavits of what irregularities they saw. In the United States, if you swear on an affidavit, and then if you are proved wrong, you go to jail. If 50 people came forward and said that we found some irregularities, that carries a lot of weight. So let's take a quick look at the rows here. There were three, six different uh, categories, outright voter fraud, ballot mishandling, contestable process fouls, equal protection clause violations, voting machine irregularities, and significant statistical anomalies. And, and Dr. Swami, you will remember that the last point, the significant statistical anomalies, is what you had used as a basis for bringing the VVPAT in India. Um, so this is something that also has happened and, and seen in this uh, election. And, and let's take a quick look at a little bit more detail. Now, this is what played out when you said that when we went to night thinking that Trump has won, only to wake up in the morning to see the entire lead disappear. So you have two timelines on the midnight of November 3rd, where things stood, Trump's lead stood. And afterwards, when at the time of certification, 12-15 is December 15th, at which point all these states formally certified, 14th was the drop dead date. You saw that Biden's lead had, uh, uh, you know, had Biden had significant lead in, in one state, but the other ones, they just scraped through. <laughs> now, if you, <laughs> if you take a look at, now this is where Peter Navarro's report gets very interesting because here he says how much of possible illegal ballots must have taken place to go from, to make the trend go from one direction to the other direction. So if you look at the thing quickly, um, in, in Arizona, he says that there were possibly over 100,000 illegal ballots. In Georgia, over 400,000. And in Michigan, he doesn't even know. In fact, Michigan is the one case that I'm going to show at the end of this slide presentation as to what really played out. And then in Nevada, same thing. And in Pennsylvania, more than 600,000. And in Wisconsin, more than 200,000. So we have a lot of questions being asked and not many answers are forthcoming from the Democratic side. They have essentially said, it's done, it is certified. Look, the, the courts have ruled against it. We're done, we're moving forward. This is the mindset of Democrats. I mean, I can understand where they are coming from. However, in my opinion, before I go to the next slide, it is, in my opinion, it's high time, high time that United States appoint a National Election Commission. This National Election Commission would be overseeing all the elections throughout the country and they will have their state branches and these state branches will report to the National Election Commission and the entire election process will have to be monitored on using a technology like the blockchain or the distributed ledger technology. That way what happens is you have one copy with the center, one copy with the state, and you can make absolutely sure that every vote cast is that of a person who is a valid US citizen. It turns out that with the right technical elements, you can actually vote from the comfort of your home and using your phone in this case. So, and you can change your vote any number of times until the last vote before the, the window closes and that will be your vote. Sir, I have said this also on uh, Gyan Ganga before. So this is the need of the day because you cannot have 
the bragging rights to be the most powerful nation on the earth and have such a sloppy election system. I'm very sorry to use harsh language, but it does feel stupid when you have to explain so many different ways in which this election is playing out. So the first allegation that came up was that there was a software called Smartmatic used in an election system called Dominion and that this start this this software was uh, actually owned by elements coming out of china in fact they somebody somebody traced out the ownership it said that the ownership link starts from china goes to iran from there to cuba from there to venezuela and then to panama where they have a subsidiary smartmatic panama which ultimately owns it so when you have so many different uh, you know links to ownership this is almost like the ndtv fraud that we had written about layer 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 to try and obfuscate the truth so this was one of the things and why this was allowed it is a big question in fact people are alleging that mitch mcconnell turned down a request a bill to try and allocate more funding to ensure the security of the voting machines was improved this bill was rejected this is a fact so why is that republicans and and we also have to remember that donald trump has been saying right from 2017 that the electoral process is flawed that they need to have at least a basic uh, identification test uh, also for viewers i must tell you that only 20 states even look at your driver's license and only 15 insist on a proper valid driver's license for identification uh, some people do want you to be a citizen but everybody takes your word you say okay i am a us citizen you show your driver's license they take that they make a note of your address the number and then you sign and you're done what is alleged in nevada is several dead people voted that many people who are illegals also voted and and i'm going to show you a snapshot of a uh, set of ballots where the same handwriting is being used and the same address is being used to uh, you know register multiple number of voters uh, this is this all happened in in houston where the republicans won so what i'm trying to say is that there has been a lot of fraud not only in the six states but also elsewhere Now John Radcliffe is the director of National Investigative Agency and he came out and gave two interviews on December 3rd he gave an interview to uh, Wall Street Journal and on December 17th he gave an interview to the Epoch Times and in both these cases he alleged he confirmed in fact that there was foreign interference in the November report and and this data is available those of you who can go to a wall street journal or the epoch times you can go and look at this thing but coming from somebody of that stature he oversees all the agencies he is the one who is looking at the big picture and he has made the determination that there was indeed electoral fraud now after that trump made a statement that the voting machines may have been also breached by a solar winds hack now those of you who uh, happened to see that google server shut down i think 2 weeks ago that was supposed to be a flaw in the solar wind software and this affected practically every company that was using it many of the fortune 500 were affected so solar wind is a fairly soft uh, popular software and and that is the other allegation that was said that solar winds was hacked in fact the 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 needle point needle of suspicion points towards russians for doing this this is still going on in fact Uh, two days ago it has emerged that for the past 9 months russia has been hacking into not just a uh, uh, simple company uh, back end but also very high secure uh, united states government websites so the the reason for um, krebs being fired evidently is that that he said that there was no interference whereas he knew evidently that uh, the the russians had in fact hacked into american system so we have to see what happens to that but trump had no choice but to fire him so this is the other huge story that came out um, in a in a website called axios there are a bunch of uh, links that we'll be providing as part of this one in this particular case we are just showing the 
uh, role of one particular alleged Chinese spy. Her name is Fang Fang. She came into the United States in the year 2011. She enrolled as a student in California State University in Hayward. And then from there, between 2011 to 2015, early 2015, you could see her in every political campaign. She was bringing very high value donations. Some of the people who helped themselves to her donations are Congressman Eric Swalwell from Dublin, also uh, the current uh, Congressman Ro Khanna, although he says that he has never met her. There are photographs of her, him being uh, uh, taken with, with her. So there is, uh, suffice to say that he was uh, also, uh, you know, involved in, in this, uh, this person reaching out to him and, and a bunch of other people. Now, what has happened is that the FBI caught her in, um, in compromising positions with two Midwest mayors. One of them, it is said, it was the mayor of Ohio. But when this thing started surfacing up, uh, she suddenly fled the country as to why the FBI allowed her to leave is a question that only FBI can answer because FBI had shown all these things to Eric Swalwell that, look, you have got yourself involved with a person who is possibly a Chinese spy. So the, the, the network runs deep. This is just but one example. She was uh, actually quoting the leaders, the Democratic leaders of tomorrow because this happened in 2011. Today, Eric Swalwell, if you remember, was front and center of the uh, accusation against Trump that uh, Russia helped him win in 2016. Guess what? A quick look at Eric Swalwell's funding shows that whatever he's accusing Trump of, he is also accused of the same thing. He is guilty of getting a lot of money from China. So, so where do you stop? The same story goes on with other people. And, and slowly but steadily, Trump has made it decision that between now and the time he demits office, he is going to try and drain the swamp. And there are stories that are making the round that a very senior Democratic congressman is under FBI custody. We still are awaiting details. This is being a complete lid has been put on this. And I'm not going to take names. I know the person and the name and everything. But at least until the official news comes out, I'm not going to make a statement. The point I'm trying to make here is most likely it's going to play out the way it has happened. And most likely Joe Biden will be the next president. But there will be a sword of democles hanging on his head all the time. Ah, but you stole the election. Half of the country is going to accuse him of that. Whether they say it openly or not, they're in their minds, any decision that he makes is going to be filtered, applied against that filter. I'm sorry to use harsh, harsh language here. Sometimes, you know, finesse doesn't cut it. These days, you have to say it as you see it. Here is the example of a bunch of ballots that was taken from a Houston booth. And you will notice that it's the same Candy Street address over and over. I'm just showing you like nine, but I have the complete ballot, like 30 uh, ballot forms, all of them, same handwriting, same address, same set of addresses, Candy Street or Wigan Street and so on and so forth. How is it possible for someone to have so many votes? So these are all things that are happening. That goes back to my original observation that the United States needs to have a state of the art election mechanism election so that nobody starts asking any more questions. This would be the first thing that Joe Biden should do in the first day of office to appoint a central election commission. This is my wish. This is my hope. I'm hoping that many people, because Dr. Swami is such a popular figure, they'll be watching this thing, especially from the United States. Please, we need to stop being the laughing stock of the world. <laughs> well, now, as a last one, this is just the last one. This is the findings that I'm going to share of a report done by an independent agency investigating into a specific county in Michigan called the Antrim County. And this, this person is giving a statement. His name is Russell James Ramsland. He's a resident of Dallas County, Texas. He has an MBA from Harvard and a political science degree from Duke. He has worked with a lot of technologies and he under oath is swearing that this is what happened when the same county election numbers were run over and over. If everything is correct, the first thing you would expect is the results are the same, right? If it doesn't matter how many times you rerun the electric voting machine, the results have to be consistent. 
Yet, you see here that the results are at variance. On November 3rd, you get one result. November 5th, a different result. November 3rd, Biden wins. November 5th, Trump wins. On November 21st, again, Trump wins. And then they did a manual count. And the manual count revealed that Trump had actually won by 4,000 more this particular county. So this is the one proof that they have that there was something that was not right about the electronic voting machine. So this is what we have to so far. Now, what is going to happen? Most likely, everybody will just put a blanket over all this stuff and say election is done and dusted. Let us move on. However, I, as a responsible citizen, as being an inventor with so many patents, I'm laughing at myself. Look, I have done so many important patents, so many things, and just just me. There are hundreds like me. And, and we can't even hold a counting mechanism. We can't count 10 figures. What is this thing? So this is something that is a, a matter of shame for every American. I hope some sense prevails over this. I'm a little emotional because I really feel that this is a gross injustice to whoever is participating in this process. I think with this, I conclude my portion, sir. Any questions you have, please let me know. We'll I mean, ask in the end, but uh, right now the floor is uh, uh, Ramesh's. Okay. Thank you, Sri. That was an excellent presentation. Okay. Um, I, whatever points I wrote down, you already covered, so I don't know what. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> So, but anyway, overall, Dr. Swami, the report, uh, the Navarro report, has really opened up a can of worms. Okay, I mean, there are there is so much of um, information being provided. I won't say it evidence because uh, you know naturally when you go evidence, it, it takes a different uh, color to it. But a lot of information is packed into it, and plus the DNI report and what she shared about the ballots and stuff like that. Net net, if everything. Uh, if the elections were just going only on the EVMs, uh, even if there is a little bit of fraud, you know, that Trump would have won hands down. I mean, I, I told you before that when the elections happened and the count started, I told you when I before I went to sleep, I said, Trump's going to win. But next day when I wake up and I said, what? This is completely different. So what what we had anticipated, the the key, the trigger that when uh, Sri shared some information, the trigger was postal ballots. I think there is, I mean, that in my view is the single uh, point where the uh, maximum fraud has happened. EVMs, I'll put it aside. I don't think the ra the, the number of, I mean, there could be a fraud fraud here and there, but not substantial. But I think where the substantial fraud would have, it, it's possible to happen is pos basically the postal ballots because that turned the tide for Biden. Okay, so whatever fraud we see, uh, uh, and what is surprising is in all of all these things that all, I mean, so many evidence was provided, thousands of people gave an affidavit, 50 cases, what is surprising to me is in US, not even one court took it seriously or even I mean, allowed it to move forward, not even one court. The second important point, I think uh, Sri and I have discussed this before, not even one state, even a Republican state, an attorney general has taken these allegations, which have been spoken about, shared among the social media, seriously and conducted even one investigation, which is shocking. I mean, even if you look at uh, what uh, the last one, last information that uh, the Antrim County, when that sworn affidavit is so clear in terms with numbers, not even one attorney general took it upon themselves to do it. Of all, the federal attorney general, Bill Barr, <laughs> didn't even care. They didn't, he said there was no fraud. And plus, when the NSA director, Kreb uh, said that there is no EVM fraud that kind of put the lid on all of this. Okay, so it is so shrouded in mystery that the uh, it appears to me that even Republican governors or politicians didn't want Trump to come back. This is what I personally feel because Trump is an outlier. He's not a standard Republican. He just they as far as they come, he just parachuted in. But he was the only guy who took a lot of action against, if you look at China, I mean, she presented a lot of evidence against China. I guess it was a people, I mean, uh, there are so many other connections that we can talk about with China, but I, I think it it has, uh, China has had a severe hand in all of this. I wouldn't count in Iran because they are under severe pressure. I think Russia and China are the biggest, uh, you know, crooks in this whole thing, which could have, they altered 
everybody kind of agreed that Russia altered the previous election. Now they're saying, you know, I think it's possible that they're doing this to this. At the end of the day, U.S. is caught with their pants down. It's, it's shameful that a country like this, which boasts technology, security, and all those things, gets hacked left, right, and center by foreign nations. Even the recent hack by the Russian ministry, you know, that's the news, the biggest news running around in the Treasury and State Department. It shows how vulnerable this country has become to outside forces. In how much ever, you know, uh, bro beats we do or, you know, we can do chest thumping. It really is shocking to see a nation that has led the world like this being, you know, uh, uh, brought down to its knees. I really wish Trump had one more term because he would have really changed the equation of China. But sadly, that's not the case. Coming to Biden, uh, he, as Sri is correct to point out that he's under a lot of pressure. Everybody, everything that he does is going to say is to stall the election. I mean, he's got that shadow behind him all the time. It, the target for Democrats is the next two years, Dr. Swami. When the congressional, when, when the representative elections happen again, they have the, 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 the Democrats have lost seats. So if they lose four seats, it will completely tilt the balance in Republicans' favor. And and as you have said, Trump has a very good chance to come back in 2024. So at this point, at the end of the day, this election is by far smoking so much with fraud that it is definitely worth investigating in every state. In every state, because it, this has gone crazy. This postal ballot has created so much of chaos that, you know, it has caused so much of fraud in definite. So that's where I leave it. Because all the other points I had Sri already covered. So I have <laughs> more to say. Uh, I may start by asking questions. Um, now, with what you have put out, uh, it's, it's such a prima facie convincing case. Now, why would the Attorney General um, uh, you know, come out of his way and make the statement that there's been no rigging? Sir, there are allegations that uh, these are allegations that uh, yeah. Bill Barr had 1.5 million stocks in Dominion Software and that he had been paid by the Dominion Software. Allegations, no proof. Uh -huh. But the so, allegations have been made. Yes, yes, yes. And printed. And that is why Trump wanted to fire him, and that's why he quit before Trump could fire him. So lots of activities are between November 3rd and today. A lot of things happening. Trump, I think, made up his mind and said, I am going, but I am going to show all these people what kind of frauds they are. I'm just trying to paraphrase. I'm trying to get into his mind and trying to answer this question. But he has determined that he is going to show all these people, which is why I also mentioned about the other FBI custody case where the names are not coming out, but there is a lot of smoke there. Okay. Uh, well, Ramesh, you want to add anything to this? No, Dr. Why? Swami, the thing is, uh, go me. ahead. Um, I, I'll just, after I'll comment after you're done. After I'm done, that, I'm done. Yeah. He's done, he's done. I didn't interrupt him. Yeah, yeah. tell me. So, no, the thing, Dr. Swami, is yeah, the, the, the only challenge I have, if I look at the litmus test, there mm -hmm. is no hard evidence provided in the report, but enough smoke that it's worth an investigation. I mean, in any other country, in a, with a decent democracy, this could have been blown up by the media, left, right, and it doesn't really matter which side of the media you are on, because this is democracy for the future. I'm looking at my daughter continuing to this. If this kind of fraud is going to happen in the US, then tomorrow even Hugo Chavez can become the president of America. You know, that's the level to which this fraud going on here. You know, or uh, Xi Jinping might be the next president of America. We can't get this done because we portray ourselves as one of the best democracies in the world and being brought down to the knees like this, which is a complete nonsense. Even as of today, even though president-elect is Biden, we have to wait till the 6th to know that if he's really going to be the president, which is kind of a shame, as Sri put it, that in our democracy like America, which complain, which, you know, where we claim technology superiority, they are EVMs. I just want to, one point that I want to cover was, the EVM is the biggest fraud this country is going through. Okay, they have zero idea. They know that the EVMs have been causing problems from not now Al Gore, right? I mean, even that's even though it's hanging Chad, but things have been going back and forth on this EVM. It's still using the same technology, the same concept, and they could just learn from India and what you had brought. That simple thing, VVPAT, a, a water verifiable paper trail, is simple. Yeah easy to implement in America, one. 
Yeah, Second, because you see the you see the vote before it falls into the falls in. and there is yeah. no way to dispute it. There is no way to do fraud. And the second, obviously, she already covered the technology of doing uh, blockchain and voting from the phone. And then the third part is Dr. What is shocking is no voter ID. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have we have to show uh, our firstborn and pretty much everything top to bottom from our body <laughs> to get a credit card or buy a car. But we don't need to show uh, any identification to vote, which is absolute nonsense. So if you get a loan, you pretty much have to pledge your firstborn to get a loan. <laughs> but when you vote for vote, which is the most important thing, ah, don't worry, you just come in. Whether you come a shirtless or what, you don't need any ID, which is nonsense in a democracy. That's so if you look at contributing factors to this, if three have been plugged, this election would have been completely different. That's I just that's the only point that I had last. I just wanted to mention. One more question before I move on to Jagdish and uh, Rin. Um, what uh, can I, as an Indian, uh, take precaution now? The, both the, the Russians are now junior partners of the Chinese. So they can play a Martin Jeff show or a Lauren Hardy show on us. See, correct. Or the, or the Marx Brothers. You, I can if I can pun on the word Marx. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Marx, uh, yeah, you know Marx Brothers. These two Marxist ex Marxist Marxist countries. Correct. What uh, what precaution should an Indian take to see that what happens in the United States didn't happen? Yes, both of you. One so by one. Start. Yeah, sir, um, today the election commission in India, I think, does a manual to electronic counter check for, I think, one uh, machine per constituency. In my opinion, that is not enough. Statistically, if you want to prove fraud, you would have to test about 10% of the EVMs. And these 10% have to be randomly selected from that particular state or whatever we take about as the unit in which the elections are being at 10%. And the 10%, every one of those things must match. If there is a mismatch, don't run the election again. The manual, uh, the paper printout should proceed, over, override the electronic count. That is the way it should be done. I think the, the amount of cross-checking that is being done is not enough. 10% will bring out fraud, in my opinion, sir. Okay, Jagdish. And so, Arvind, one more thing, Dr. Swami. Yes. Uh, you mentioned about what India needs to be careful about. Yes. The wars are not going to be on battlefields or anything anymore, Dr. Swami. It's cyber wars. Okay. India, I don't know. I mean, based on what I limited know, I mean, read, I'm not claiming any uh, absolute knowledge or evidence. Mm. India is very vulnerable to cyber threats, big time. And India, does. I don't see a cyber strategy or a cyber expert in the government maybe it's secret it may be you know you could it could all be confidential I, I i might i'm just still giving the benefit of doubt but if we don't have a national strategy against cyber threats india's every piece of infrastructure is under threat when a state department and treasury in the us has been hacked mm -hmm. how far is india i mean india is so vulnerable because our our babus are not that educated not all of them I mean, most of the babus there could be some of you here or there that are and our infrastructure and, and the very very limited lack of basically public private partnership and trust is yeah. also lacking in india because you you don't consider you know the, there could be people like a, collaborating with iits uh, bringing the experts in which i don't see as evidence because sometimes you should show your defense and saying that hey you know we are watching every move because the rogue nations pakistan and people like that they are known to keep doing these kind of jobs okay so we have israel who's a great friend we could be a befriend america more a little bit but israel has been solid in defending their infrastructure from cyber threats we should i mean use i mean for based on what you know about them we should really enhance our cyber security infrastructure so that's the only point you think india should take our lessons from this okay over to you people uh, and uh, my question to ramesh and uh, sri irg is this that India has this uh, election, uh, National Election Commission. What has prevented US? You have a uh, first war of independence. Uh, the uh, American independence was 1776. You have a written constitution. And you claim to be a very strong democratic country. What has prevented you from having an, a National Election Commission all these years? 
So you Ramesh, you want to... Uh, you want to take that first because every time everyone I've been taking first. You take okay, it. Okay, so first. so Jagdish ji, I think the US is basically a federated uh, a government because every state is independent to take uh, independent is completely independent and they can they have their some I mean they have their own constitutions and stuff like that. The federal government can only interfere in certain things, national defense and things like that. They cannot interfere in a lot of the states how they do conduct ele elections is one part of it. Every state. Uh, it was one complication that maybe we didn't cover was every state can decide how they uh, count the votes, when yeah. they start counting the votes, yeah. uh, you know, how they receive the paper ballot. It is like amazing. And what voting machine they can choose or not choose or do the methods. Everything is independent. Every state can declare and any way the, they wish to count. And when they declare, they declare. So it's completely independent. So which is the huge cause of confusion. OK, the second thing, again, I'm against is basically this biparty system in this country is destroying this country, because uh, if you do a multi-party system, the fraud might come down a little bit because at least there are more people competing for this thing. There will be more watchdogs. So now we have only two parties. This is my personal opinion. And, and of course, coming back to this EVM and thought, but the way the structure is in the US is basically the biggest impediment. Hopefully they get rid of the electoral college in the end. <laughs> No, but let me tell you one thing. Let me share with you a thing. Uh, Presidential election mm. and perhaps your uh, national senate or congress, whatever it is known as, which is more or less equivalent of our members of parliament, they are national elections. We also in India, many people don't know, we have state election commissioners, which conduct election, no, we, which conduct election in India. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Our, state bodies correct and they are independent of the national election commission correct national election commission only looks after uh, india's national election commission looks after the presidential election vice presidential election the members of the lok sabha rajya sabha and the mlas and all the other state bodies look after the uh, local elections so it's not that we don't look after but you know I think in some issues you all are quite backward, having having uh, got independence nearly three centuries ago. Yeah, you all yeah, are not, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because we still follow a three hundred or year old constitution, uh, Jagdish ji. Because frozen it is enshrined. So, Doctor Swami, go ahead. But frozen mind. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. we will we. America amending the constitution is, uh, you know, uh, they'd rather uh, hang themselves than change the constitution. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jagdish ji, to just add to your, uh, uh, to Ramesh's point, you know, when you drive out of California to say Nevada or to any other state, uh, most likely nobody checks anything. But if you're driving back into California, you have to actually, you'll be stopped and you'll be asked, what are you bringing into California? I'm just trying to say this to say that each state has its own set of rules. You know, uh, for example, cars have a much higher emission standard requirement in California than everywhere else. Therefore, a car that has been driven in California has a slightly higher value outside of California because the buyer in outside of California thinks, oh, this has been subjected to much higher emission standard. Therefore, this car is better. So, you know, all sorts of things like this happen. This is this is where the states in United States comes in, and and uh, the, the, be that as it may, I think now this is ample proof that the election system, the way we elect, has to be looked at from ground up. That is the point that uh, I think. Absolutely. This, uh, I mean, in of basically the way we conduct the elections, how the votes are counted, or how the president is selected. If you look at these three core the issues, and it's not federalized in the sense that you know every state can decide whatever they want to do. The, you, uh, the Federal Election uh, Commission or whatever, the equivalent in America, cannot audit a state election audit. They cannot. They don't have the right to do an audit. Unless the, unless a court does that, you have to re-audit. Only the state can do it. No external agency can audit a state declared result, which means even if it's at a presidential level, which is not the case in India. Because in India, the presidential prime minister, MP, all those elections being conducted by the Election Commission of India, it has a higher authority. The state bodies cannot object to it. They can go and file a court, a court you mean a case, but you know that level is not there in, uh, in in the U.S. That's what I'm trying to say. That's where the confusion is because every state has its own right to do whatever they want, literally. 
in Are fact you? Amit Chaturvedi will ask the next question but i just want to tell you you are in united states of america but perhaps you don't qualify to be called as a nation for nation <laughs> qualification and yeah. india rightly qualifies to be a nation because the chinese in 1962 thought that one push to some states here or there or something happen the entire country will break up but no in fact one of the advantages of india is that it may be divided into smaller states but the whole country is united and one unlike united states of america yeah. in a way i i'll defend america in one case jagdish because we are a 2 and 300 year old country from a constitution and a democracy perspective india learnt a lot from others near a 70 year old young democracy so you learnt a lot including america you learnt a lot Okay, so no, we are no, we are an ancient democracy. You go to Ramayana. No, no, we no, no, we never learnt a lot. Perhaps we learnt a lot. L E N T. Anyway, we'll we'll agree to disagree on this point. I mean, we can just go back ages, but that way, India, America didn't even exist a few centuries. You defend your country. I'll defend my country. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, Doctor Swami. I'm just saying from a point of the democracy established. Yeah, we were the constitution till the. Uh, the Mughals and the British came. Otherwise, we were democratic. We had Punjab system. No, no, but you were not yeah, a united country. Yeah, right? You were kingdoms. Oh, and I don't want to argue this point, but anyway, I don't want to digress. But I'm just saying modern democracy. That's all I'm talking. <laughs> well, we, we, we got BBPAT and a, and, a, and a single election commission, whereas you have all got uh, all kinds of kitchen in your. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the kitchery is what is making this happen, Doctor Swami. I mean, the kitchery that we well, have. We have more what... advanced than you. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm not disagreeing on that point. Okay. I'm not disagreeing on that point. All I'm saying is we are much old. We have not pro. We have not changed the core things that we are supposed to change. Arvind, I am uh, Mr. Sri Ayer and uh, Ramesh Swami. You have made excellent presentation. I mean, uh, anybody who uh, sees this presentation, it is absolutely convincing that there has been some election fraud. Uh, uh, in U.S. election, I mean, election fraud term is not new to uh, we Indians. I mean, uh, we have seen this. Dr. Swami mentioned about Indira Gandhi uh, election, which was malpractice. But even uh, when we had uh, ballot papers, uh, there were allegations in 70s and 80s and 90s that ballot paper, ballot boxes were changed between the election and the counting and all that. So it is not something which is uh, unknown to us Indian. But we never thought. That even U.S. elections can have this kind of thing. I was reading somewhere that these kind of uh, allegations are going on uh, uh, since November, uh, when the election was uh, uh, on and counting was still on, and no final results were declared. And billions of uh, viewers have seen these kind of uh, 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 reports channel on YouTube and uh, other social media. And I've also read one report that YouTube has removed. Thousands of uh, such reports and uh, channels, 8,000 channels or something, uh, alleging that these are not correct. So now I don't know how long, how long because we are also live on YouTube. I don't know how long will this stay <laughs> if YouTube has this policy of removing it. Uh, but but why is it so? Why YouTube is doing it? Why YouTube is partition? Sri, <laughs> yes. So um, there is a answer in this uh, to this question. In the fact that President Trump just turned down the defense bill, because in the defense bill there was a line item to take down what is called as Section 230 of the Communications Bill of the United States. This was drafted in 1996, and that sort of gave the status to social media companies such as Google, Facebook, that they were just platforms. However, now that YouTube or Facebook or Twitter have started selectively you know, filtering and disseminating what they think is right. Now, that particular privilege must be taken away. So that is what he was expecting the defense bill to say. And the bill did not have that entry and therefore he turned it down. Whereas everybody now, the Democrats especially, are saying, oh, Trump doesn't understand that defense cannot work without this bill. But they don't want to admit that they forgot to put in this one line of completely disbanding the 230 because what is needed is a new law that is more in compliance with the rules of 2020, not 1996. At 1996, we barely had dub, dub, dub. 
we barely had a graphical interface so it, things don't apply anymore it is outdated that needs to be changed and and they don't want to do it so there this is the underlying thing there hopefully something quickly will happen and and these companies will have to decide whether they want to be called media companies or just merely platform because i don't see the platform for part i can go to any commission and i can give you my personal experiences i have a whole suite of a slate of uh, uh, accounts in twitter facebook youtube everywhere where i can say that this was not uh, managed fairly uh, no uh, in addition to what in addition to what jagdish shetty said about the election commission comparing I mean, india and the us I mean, we also big have big in big india i mean we also have in india where are we wait a minute uh, Ramesh wanted to add something to uh, what. Uh, no, it was more of a question back to you. Let Arvind complete because this is a very interesting okay. question that comes from one of the viewers. So that's why. Right. In addition to the machinery that we have, central machinery and the state machinery, we also have a legal provision for challenging the election. We have seen in many cases in last 30, 40 years, elections when they were challenged, maybe in two years' time or three years' time. just before the completion of the term of member of parliament um, is, we don't have a, a presidential election members of parliament uh, it has been that the court has set aside the election so why can't the uh, team uh, of uh, trump or the uh, uh, supporters of the trump go to different courts in different states and challenge it in fact uh, 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 we only read that the, in the last month there was some uh, 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 intention that they will go to the court and challenge it what happened in different courts is there any uh, decision taken about this thing um, all cases were thrown out yes they they have been defeated in all the cases so that's, that's what i'm saying this, this seems to be either a gigantic conspiracy or uh, you know the, the, the evidence is not uh, been sufficient yeah because i don't think it passed the threshold in a in a court of law doctor so i mean that's the problem even though there have been thousands of affidavits see if the state attorney generals did their job well and they felt that there was a thing they should have done their duty to the citizen saying that yes there is some there are so many people complaining we should do an investigation and present evidence i mean people at the end of the day you know just going and saying thousands of affidavits the courts are not going to listen because there is no substantiated it's not been authenticated validated so it's very difficult it won't pass the muster in a us court so that's the challenge there is enough evidence no state is ready to do an investigation is shocking yeah see i hear you want to good dr swami one question from uh, uh, one of the vhs members here so they said i mean recently uh, there was an article or uh, prime minister modi said that they want one nation one election <coughs> So that is, uh, you know, so is that how is that going to work, Doctor Swami? I'm just curious. It has worked in the past till 1967. Okay. We always had, except for Kerala. Mm. Uh, we, uh, uh, you know, because we, unlike the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Senate, in India, well, assemblies can be dissolved mm. before the five-year term is over. Parliament can be dissolved before the time is over. so the thing is that the, the they are no more in 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 in, in tandem so up till 1967 uh, all our elections uh, general elections were assembly and parliament together okay and all lasted 5 years the the then the coalition came and then the, the congress party split and so on. so that's how uh, it got uh, more you never were able to get this done Mm. Uh, unless he says that even if a, how a party loses, uh, you know, Germany has a rule that if a party loses majority due to a you know, vote of no confidence motion uh, moved by the opposition, then they will continue to rule unless the uh, mover of that uh, resolution is able to uh, create a majority uh, uh, to uh, to su succeed the, uh, the government which has been uh, which has lost the election. And so in Germany, many times you lost the vote of no confidence, and then uh, you continued uh, for for two years uh, and finished your term. So that, that that would be disastrous if we do in our country because the legitimacy factor is completely we lost. So therefore, I think the the system that we have today can't be altered very much. Okay, thank you. Any any concluding comments? I think uh, I think uh, the. Are you muted, Jagdish Ji? Sorry. 
I think the key lies with the Indian voter. If the Indian voter sees that there is a some kind of uh, 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 instability in the state government and by not giving a, a majority support to a party and if there is a, uh, a hung assembly or hung parliament, in that case there are alternative governments and these governments do not last for full term. And if you look at the last 2014 and 2019, it is after 35 years that a party got a clear majority in the Indian parliament. I mean, it's after 84. Yeah. And till the uh, uh, last 30 years, 84 to uh, 2014, uh, we never had a single party winning majority. So voter is changing. And I think voter will bring to this situation that uh, maybe uh, all the assembly elections and uh, uh, parliament elections can uh, be together. But uh, at least once this decision will have to be taken that to curtail the life of some assemblies to coincide with the parliament election. Yeah. Which is now due to no, Yeah, now I only want to say one thing. Some leaders have a habit of saying uh, uh, simultaneously election to parliament and assembly. But when they are in power, they could have done it. I'll give you an example. 2019, the parliament election was in 2000 May, 19 May. And Maharashtra assembly and in the parliament, the ruling party was led by Mr. Narendra Modi, BJP, and Maharashtra Assembly was led by Mr. Devendra Fadnavis of BJP. If Mr. Modi was serious about it, he could have said to the Devendra Fadnavis government, let us have both the elections together. You advance it by six months. These are all popular slogans. When it comes to implementing, you cannot implement it within your own party. It's popular slogan. Yeah. As Dr. Swami explained, if some assembly gets dissolved or you lose a now what happens if Maharashtra tomorrow you lose you uh, the present government loses a vote of no confidence, will you wait for another uh, uh, four years for the elections to take place? It's all very popular slogans, but honestly, it's not taking place, and neither has the people a determination and will to implement these type of things. Anyway, this is nothing to do with the U.S. presidential election, but it's part of the discussion which uh, evolved. Uh, we uh, got in. Uh, uh, one final word, right, if I might. One yeah. final word, if I might. Um, yeah. the, the United States is always good once it realizes that there is something wrong in correcting itself. For example, after the 2001 9-11 instance, we created a new Department of Homeland Security that brought everybody together. The intelligence that was available with the FBI finally got shared with CIA and vice versa. And the NSA got much more power. I am hoping that this election opens up the eyes of everybody, bipartisan, doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter, whoever it is, that the need for a central election commission is here and now. And I hope that Joe Biden constitutes this thing and then does it the right way. There is the technology is available. Plus voter, ID. Expensive. Plus voter ID. Of course, I'm just saying, I'm saying minimum you have to have U.S. citizenship. You have to have proof of U.S. citizenship. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Any I'm, I'm thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. I'm, Swami. I'm, 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 thank you, Shri Ayer. No, no, one second. Thank thank you, you, Ramesh, no, one second. Dr. Swami, go ahead. No, I'm saying that uh, when the Indian elections take place, uh, please, both of you stay in India. We want to know whether the Chinese and the Russians are going to mess with it or not. <laughs> and and uh, you guys are also cyber, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, you know cyber uh, uh, technology very well. So I think we, are, we may need you. And after hearing you today, we are convinced that you should be around here, at least the as part of the VHS team, and uh, we can make other people's life miserable. You know that we have done it already. Uh, and the P Gurus uh, has, uh, by its publicity, put so many people on notice. I, I hear so many people saying that the first thing we do is read P Gurus. So uh, I think uh, this kind of thing is necessary in a democracy. So thank you very, very much for coming, taking off time and coming on this program. And, 
uh, apprising us of what's happening in the United States. Yeah, it's our pleasure, Dr. Swami. It was our pleasure, sir. Namaskaram. Thank you very much. And I look forward yeah, to being was, part of this. It was really very convincing. And I'm, sh I'm sure uh, some people in the U.S. will now take note of it. And in the future election, at least, they will be careful so that such frauds are not repeated. I mean, this could be a lesson. And uh, as we have discussed, uh, there are a lot of reforms needed in the United States as far as electioneering is concerned. Not only setting up of election commission, but as Ramesh Swami said, even the introduction of ID, uh, oh. voter ID uh, before voting. So these are some of the things the U.S. can learn from India. We have discussed this the, the, the subject. They can learn from India. 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 Also, India. Yeah, definitely. I mean, but a lot of countries. Right. They can learn from. Why you learn yeah. from India? U.S. may be uh, ahead of India in uh, economic terms, but uh, in uh, election management, right. there's a lot to be learned. Uh, and uh, both these observers are welcome when the as a VHS observer when the election takes place in India. On this note. Thank you very much, both, both the guest speakers, Dr. Subramanian Swami, co-host Jagdish Shetty, and we'll be meeting again on Saturday uh, on Nyai Gan Ganga and Sunday again on Words of Wisdom Gan Ganga with a news topic and Dr. Subramanian Swami to discuss, to bring it to the VHS viewers and the viewers all over the world. Thank you.